Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I've got some dreams to share with you. Um, this is Tuesday, June 30th at 6.03 p.m. Oh, I was just thinking it was probably his supper time. I keep working and I just totally lose track of time. But he's sleeping. So I'm going to leave him alone. He didn't sleep last night. <laughs> I didn't get much sleep either, but anyway, I wanted to share this with you. So, now this first dream was given to Chris Chapman, and I do believe it was meant for him, but he said that I could share it, and I decided I would because it may pertain to some other people, and I, I firmly believe it will. Uh, maybe not exactly in the same way, but it it was a rebuke to him for something. So let me share this with you. All right, and then I have another uh, video of a pastor. Some of you may have seen him, Pastor Dana. I wanted to play a little bit of his and then put the link and stuff in the description box. Well, I'm going to start with Chris's dream. All right, listen to this. I was with other people in a hotel or lodge room. Some, I think, were characters from cartoons. And he described to me in another email that he meant they were like the anime characters, the uh they're like Japanese looking, Asian looking um, figures. I knew what he meant. So the characters looked like anime characters. But that's beside the point. Um, this, hmm. You might, you might want to put little children out of the room. Pause this. And have them go get a cookie or something. Alright. Just for this part. Well they decided to go into one of the bedrooms. I stayed in the main room. A man around my age. With blonde hair. Came to me. And told me to watch them have sex on a monitor. He had put in front of me. I remembered to not deny my faith. So I looked above the monitor and told him no. Well, he said in return something about blackmailing me into doing so or else by telling or else he would... This is worded a little funny. Or else by telling the cops about how I committed adultery. But then he explained to me he meant he was going to get blackmailed for watching those people have sex in the other room. Okay? I do not recall correctly. Uh, he called the cops over and they arrested me. Just on that man's word. See, that's how it is now, isn't it? And we'll be worse like that. On somebody's word, a Christian will be blackmailed, arrested, just because they refuse to go along with the evil side. Anyway, that's, I don't want to get off into that. Let me finish reading. The cops then brought me to a hospital where I was told to go to a table where there were three people there. I went over and a young man in between three young women told me that I need to take a syringe. Instantly, I thought, that it could be the mark of the beast. 
I instantly told them, no, I'm not taking it. As a nurse came over with a syringe, I took it from her and used it as a sword as to block the other nurse with another syringe. As one uses a sword to block another sword. Dreams are weird, aren't they? With syringe in hand, I ran, spraying the contents onto a nurse chasing after me. She screamed. I got some on my leg as I ran. Turns out it burned like acid. Wow. That's me saying wow, not him. I ran to the nearest stairs as a young doctor and nurses with possibly a few cops chasing me. I tried to see if I could conjure up some walls since I'm in a dream. I've done things like that. You know you're in a dream, so you figure, like I flew. I can remember having dreams long time ago, thinking, well, I'll just try flying, and I would, and I would be flying, just kind of soaring like a bird. Um, anyway, back to his dream. To see if I could conjure up some walls since I'm in a dream. I only imagined doing so, for none actually appeared to block them off at the beginning of the staircase. Well, the young doctor got to me, but I ran to the top. Once there, I found that there was a large railing over a drop. A man wearing a suit, possibly an administrator or the CEO, walked to where I was as other nurses got to where I was. He asked me why I wouldn't take the vaccine. I believe I said, because I believe in Christ. I then asked God if the rapture will happen. He told me I will have to go through some of the tribulation. And then the rapture will happen, which may possibly refute the pre-tribulation rapture. Regardless, I still believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. God told me to get in a closet near to me. As I did, I saw red light coming from below, from below us and possibly lava or fire. I could not tell. I then got into the closet filled with, I think, a stack of board games. I shut the door. Instantly, I felt rumbling and saw flames mixed with white light, which is to say... I saw flames intermingled and dancing among white light. I was not sure if I had entered hell or if I was, it was a purification. I then woke up. My guess is the fire was of purification and that I did not go to hell but I am not sure. What do you think? Okay, then I told him what I thought. That maybe I asked him, do you spend a lot of time? Uh, okay, here's what I said. I believe this dream is for you, but it could be for many others, okay? It is a type of warning dream. I need to ask, do you watch a lot of cartoons? Even The Simpsons, Smart Guy, 
you know, the adult kind. And what about games? You were told to get into a closet that had board games, but that could represent you playing games, either alone or online, with others. That could represent an idol in your life. Now, this is what I felt the dream was, meaning. This is what comes to my mind. If not your problem, then maybe it is for others who do have these issues. They may watch four hours a day of cartoons thinking it's okay, they are just cartoons. But how much time do they spend with Jesus? And in that, and in the Word. And if people have four hours for any hobby, no matter how okay it is, but not enough time for Jesus, that is a huge problem. And just as the girl in my last video said, we need to get closer to Jesus. If y'all saw that, it was very moving. That girl having, she was praying in the spirit as she was on her daily walk. And she saw a vision of Jesus kind of far ahead of her. But she knew it was him. He had on a white robe and you don't dress like that now, you know. So she knew it was Jesus. And she didn't like the distance between them. She wanted him to be closer. And she, anyway, you should watch that video. It, it was one of the last ones I've done. Um, it's about getting closer to Jesus. Okay, this is um, just as the girl in my last video said. We need to get closer to Jesus. So I believe that is so true of most of the church. Jesus will say to many, I do not know you. Or leave them behind. In other words, they will be left behind. The part with the hospital and syringes is revealing what will eventually happen to Christians who are left behind. It may come after the first one, the first rapture. Many will be left because they need more refinement. And you going into that closet was going to be your refinement, whatever it was. It was representative of that. Could be Jesus wants you to make for yourself a prayer closet. That was something I thought of. Do, I do not have a spare room or closet, but it might be your car outside somewhere, a shed that you could tidy up and hang across. I put a hand. I meant hang across. Um, I don't know. You pray about that. I just have to, I have to close my eyes and maybe I look up at the sky in the mornings and at night I do better just closing my eyes. If I keep my eyes open and, and kind of look around, if I focus on my picture of Jesus in this corner over here, I do okay. But I can tend to get distracted with what needs doing around here and stuff I want to do. Little stuff, nothing big. And that then I have to make myself start over because I have a set pattern of what I say. It's not, I don't consider it a ritual. It's just spiritual warfare prayers that I have to, I have to say it every night. I start with the Lord's Prayer. I go into pleading the blood for my dog, over my dog and myself, and over all of my pieces of armor, and that I will stand ready to do battle and pray in the Spirit at all times, and then I'll pray in the Spirit, or I may pray in the Spirit in between all of it. And that's the Holy Spirit helping me to remember the next thing, I believe, or interrupting because someone at that moment needs prayer. I, you know, I, I never know why. Why, you know, sometimes I, instead of just letting me put it where I usually do, 
I'll start praying in the spirit and then after the Lord's prayer I'll pray in the spirit then and in between the, you know but anyway um, the point is I don't have a prayer closet I wish I did because if you have a set aside place where you don't have much to look at or prayer shawl my daughter would use a prayer shawl and that was her prayer closet okay anyway I asked you mentioned committing adultery because that's how he worded it I said if you asked for forgiveness and you meant it you were forgiven thank father for his forgiveness of sins thank Jesus for dying on the cross to provide the grace we get when we are forgiven and the blood that cleanses us accept the forgiveness and do not worry about it anymore I will share this it could help others who are having issues accepting forgiveness or they have an idol in their lives okay and I said thank you so much for sharing this alright well then he explained it wasn't that he committed adultery it was that he was gonna that man was gonna call the cops on him for watching those others do it because he wouldn't participate in their sordid little perverted games okay so anyway that was what I thought it could be and um, anyway I hope that helps somebody else okay now I want to tell you about this pastor the video is called three prophetic dreams from pastor Dana I never heard of this guy his channel well it's on channel L W M all caps and then small letters video but all spelled together living word ministries it stands for living word ministries assemblies of God in Burksville Kentucky pastor Dana Coverstone is the pastor of living word ministries Assemblies of God in Burksville, Kentucky. Makes me want to move there. Shares three prophetic dreams he has had and their relationship to current as well as near future world events. Now the first dream is what happened in March, April, and May. And it all came to pass and he had the dream in December. Now let me play what his dream is for the coming three months. Uh, talk about schools opening back up and things of that nature. <laughs> but the things that I saw in a dream and vision back in December are the same things that I watched in the news almost every day since March through June. All this time I kept hearing, brace yourself, brace yourself. Um, I spend time in prayer. I spend time in the Word. I'm a pastor. And it's not just my job, it's something that I enjoy doing, I love doing, and I'm very interested in the news around the world. I read 40 newspapers a day from all around the world. I, I keep up with news uh, in other parts of the, of, of the, the nations better sometimes than I hear here because it's hard to know who to trust. But I get news from all over the world, all around the world, from both liberal and conservative sources. Um, I'm very well read, I'm very understanding of how nations work. I've traveled quite a bit, and I'm not just making these things up. I can confirm what I have said. And with that in mind, on Monday night, I had another dream. And it woke me from my bed. I made notes about it. I shot some video of myself, just making sure I can remember. But here's what I saw. I saw a calendar. Start with a calendar. And as I was having this, the calendar was up, a white figure appeared. And it, it, to me, it was it was a rep, representing God, the Holy Spirit, something pure, something righteous, something true, something holy. Because there was nothing um, nothing sinister about it, nothing evil. But I heard the voice say, "Part two, part two. And I saw June go up. I saw July. I saw August, and then I saw September. 
and I saw the finger underneath the word September, and I, like emphasizing it, and tapped it three times. And then I saw October. That happened in his first dream. The calendar said March, April, May, and tapped May three times, and that was part one, okay? And all that came to pass, what he saw in his dream. Come up. And then I saw November, and this is when Amen. it got finger underneath the word September, and I, like emphasizing it, and tapped it three times. And then I saw October come up, and then I saw November, and this is when it got real to me in the dream. I think the intensity, uh, according to my Fitbit, when I woke up, my heart rate was about 180. So that was Monday night. It was also a night that I woke up not feeling very well at all. I was up during the night, not feeling well. But anyway, the minute the finger... Excuse me, this was put up June 25th. And today's June 30th, 6.24 p.m. Okay. Underlined November three times. Instead of tapping it, I saw a fist ball up and it hit the calendar. And literally, the calendar exploded into the wall. The numbers seemed like they were 3D and they were falling, they were just flying everywhere. And there was a cloud of chaos that started. And then the next thing I saw was I saw, I saw armed protesters. I saw fighting in the streets. I saw people pummeling one another. I saw businesses shuttered and shut up. I saw, I saw schools close. I saw schoolrooms with cobwebs hanging in them and like things like papers falling off the wall and posters falling like no one had been in them for months. I saw banks, bank buildings with the roofs being taken off. It looked almost like alien abduction because money was just flying through the roof into some type of like a vacuum cleaner. That sounds kind of strange, but I was watching wealth just being taken. I saw politicians in back rooms uh, making deals with people, pat, you know, patting people on the back and, and laughing and smiling and smirking. Mm -hmm. And I saw monuments. I saw, I saw Washington, D.C. burning. I saw Washington, D.C. blazing. I saw fires everywhere. I saw people being rounded up. I saw Chinese and Russian soldiers on the Okay, I'm going to stop it there. And I want you to remember that uh, some of us are not even going to see this. I am sure in my, I feel sure in my mind and in my heart and in my spirit. Because as the scriptures say, pray that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. So... If you say, well, what about what happened in Seattle? And then to them people, well, they're probably not praying to escape all these things. If if you if any of you all live in that area, you, I'm pretty sure you would have put it, put it in a comment. You know, hey, I live in this area. I live in Chop Zone or whatever, Chaz. And, and uh, this is going on and that's going on or whatever, you know. Nobody has said that. People that are, are looking for the coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be protected from whatever comes along until he comes for us. He's going to use what Satan's doing. Satan's ruling right now. He's letting him. He kind of gave him the He gave him the rule when Adam and Eve sinned, broke his one commandment, don't eat from this tree. People want to say they had sex with Satan. Well, uh, I'm sorry, I don't believe that. I don't think it was an apple, but it doesn't matter. He told them, do not eat of the fruit of this tree. And they did. I can't wait to get to heaven. I'm going to have a little talk with Eve. I say that, but, I, you know, I'm, I'm not. Um, anyway, this, I'm going to leave the link. This is only halfway through this, not even halfway through this video, so I can't imagine what more he has to say. 
I just wanted to give you a taste of what he has dreamed, and he had three dreams now. He's still talking about the second one. All right. So, with that, I'm going to say I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, over myself, my computer, my internet connection, and over each and every one of you, your devices, and your internet connections. And I pray that this doesn't scare anybody, but causes you, if you don't feel you're ready or that close to Jesus, that you will get there. You put down those things you're still using that you shouldn't be. Or watching things you shouldn't be. That if you get a prick in your conscience. But you think, oh, that's just the only one thing I do wrong. Well, if you're getting a prick in your conscience to not watch it. You feel at all guilt or convicted. You know, eventually, if you keep ignoring that feeling, the Holy Spirit will quit. He will sear your conscience. And you'll be able to turn it on and not feel anything and won't bother you a bit. So don't do that. If you feel led to, to quit anything, quit it. Or to start doing something. Start doing it. How close are you to Jesus? How close? I want to be closer. I want to spend more time in prayer. Praising and worshiping. Anyway, with that I'll say I'll let you go. I'll talk to you later, and I hope these things have helped you in some way. All right, bye for now.